Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, let's do that one more time. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone's uh, having a wonderful, excellent day and that you're surviving the heat outside. I guess the issue is you're inside now, so absolutely you're surviving. We want to thank you for coming to the 2017 Women's Wealth and Health Equity Summit. It is absolutely phenomenal to see all of your beautiful, lovely faces. My name is Maya Rockymore. I'm president and CEO of the Center for Global Policy Solutions, and it is my pleasure to welcome you here today. Uh, this product, this event, uh, is a product of Allies for Reaching Community Health Equity. It's a program that we manage through the Center for Global Policy Solutions. And so we are excited to have you here. As president of the Center for Global Policy Solutions, my mission is to see society driven towards inclusion. That is the focus of our organization. Uh, the idea for this Women's Wealth and Health Equity Summit was developed and followed uh, as a result of our Health Equity Design Lab, otherwise known as our Head Labs. Uh, the purpose of the Head Labs is to convene thought leaders and community stakeholders to build consensus and incubate the best ideas that promote equity in key policy program areas ripe for intervention or innovation. At our second head lab, uh, it was called Mind the Gaps, Gender Pay Equity and the Implications for Health Equity, uh, we realized that we needed to expand our analytical lens and include the wealth gap to better inform our understanding of the systemic nature of health and economic in in inequities. Uh, as you all well know, we tend to focus on the income gap, but rarely do we focus on the wealth gap. And it's important to do so when we're talking about the status of women. It also became clear that one day wasn't enough time to fully explore issues around women's health and wealth. So in an effort to push society toward inclusion and equity for all, particularly for women, we decided to plan this summit. There is an inextricable link between a woman's wealth and her health, uh, but that connection is not always clear. Uh, persistent gender bias systems have created a wealth gap that has left women with just 32 cents of wealth for every dollar of wealth owned by men. There are further disparities by, uh, by racial status and ethnicity. Uh, women of color, and in fact, if you look at African American women and the wealth gap who are single, their line doesn't move beyond the zero line. Literally, uh, we are, a lot of us have negative wealth. And for Latina women, it's not that much better. Uh, the fact of the matter is that given that 40% of women are the main breadwinners for their families and women comprise 47% of the US workforce, when we're sick, it affects not only our families, but our economy too. But get this, a little pop quiz. What percentage of the U.S. economy, what percentage of the purchases do women make in the U.S. economy? Somebody give me a number. 70%, 80%, 90, 92%. The answer is 85%. Without us, there would be no economy, ladies. We make the economy go round. So does it make any sense for us to have gender disparities in pay? Does it make any sense for us to have women without jobs that have access to benefits that support our families? Does it make any sense for us to have wealth disparities that undermine our ability to take care of ourselves and our families? I would argue it absolutely does not make any sense and this must be changed. Earlier this week, 40 practitioners, experts, community leaders convened at our third head lab session to further discuss the landscape of wealth and health from the perspective of key stakeholders. And they developed recommendations for your consideration. Uh, we believe that that smaller convening was a success. Uh, together, those participants were able to come up with a variety of solutions for address addressing the health and wealth gap for women but there's still more work to be done, and that's why we're here today and tomorrow. This summit is bringing together all of you policy experts, thought leaders, community leaders, to enrich our research and our problem-solving process. We're going to be reviewing what the smaller group did, at kicking the tires, if you will, uh, testing it, ground-truthing it, coming up with new and better solutions, because ultimately, this summit 
seeks to build a shared language, a framework, and a policy agenda to address the women's wealth and health inequities. By expanding understanding of the impact of economic inequities on the health and well-being of children, families, and communities, we can build more effective strategies, partnerships, and policies that promote health and financial security for women and their families. We are looking forward to an exciting few days of discussions, panels, and breakouts on the topics of women's wealth and health, and particularly how these topics affect women of color, uh, low-income women, families, and the U.S. economy at large. We have some very dynamic sessions planned for both today and tomorrow, and we'll discuss these issues in a robust way. I also want to point out that we have an interactive display outside, right outside in the uh, foyer, and it's called Undesign the Red Line. And I urge you to visit the exhibit. Uh, it is an exploration of how historical structural inequalities uh, actually come into play in terms of modern day outcomes. And, and it explores also the solutions to undo those structural inequalities. So in a second, I'm going to welcome to the stage uh, the moderator and the panelists for the first panel, which is entitled Health Equity, Understanding the Social Determinants. Uh, this panel features a dynamic group of fabulous, brilliant, articulate, I mean, just wonderful women panelists and will be moderated by Dr. Judy Lubin, the director of our Allies for Reaching Community Health Equity Program. But before I do so, I just want to give a few acknowledgments. I want to acknowledge uh, the Thicket Labs team for all of the work that they've done to help facilitate over the last two days. You'll be meeting this team uh, in the course of your next two days. I want to acknowledge my team, the Center for Global Policy Solutions team. Can you wave or stand and say hello to everybody? Uh, they'll be also helping you uh, over the next two days. They pulled together this summit along with the team at Beyond Ideas Group, uh, Antonio White and his team. I think that they're outside. Just want to make sure that we acknowledge them. And I want to also, um, you know, we will be having, as I mentioned, a dynamic panel. Dr. Susan Blumenthal, you will be hearing from, and I am excited about that. Uh, and this evening, we'll have a formal dinner and keynote address from Dr. Lena Wynn, the City of Baltimore's Public Health Commissioner. Uh, there are a number of exciting speakers lined up, and we just invite you to sit back, enjoy, engage, and most of all, resist. Thank you.